Hi, and welcome to Women, Nutrition, and Support, a four-part video series that examines how women's health professionals can help their patients and clients set a strong foundation of health before they even begin their interventions. Hi, I'm Jessica Drummond of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute, and I'm excited to bring you video one today. Today, we're going to explore how to help our patients achieve success on their own terms. We've all heard of the new book, Lean In. Uh, we all have many definitions of success, perhaps Martha Stewart's definition of the most successful flawless party or the parenting book's definition of success for how to raise your child or your boss's definition of success for seeing 30 patients a day. Today, we're going to explore how how zoning in on a patient or client's specific definition of success is actually important to improving her physical health symptoms. First of all, let's explore some of the research on how burned out women really are. So out in the world, there have been numerous studies on burnout, and a recent study published in the International Archives of Medicine found that at one hospital of excellence, 10% of the nurses were flat out burned out. And you know, most of my clients as a women's health uh, coach and nutritionist, most of them are healthcare professionals. And I would say that this number is very low. There was another article published in Forbes magazine, I believe about a year ago, that looked at when women start out in the workforce, how, how long are they there? How high are they achieving? About 53% of women in entry level of people in entry level corporate jobs are women. But when you get to the higher level jobs, the vice president jobs, um, the senior management jobs, that number drops to 26%. So 50% of corporate women are either burning out or just flat out dropping out of the workforce before they achieve the uh, corporate definition of success. And when you Google burned out moms, I got about 4 million hits. So it doesn't matter what kind of work women are doing, but we are burning out in droves. What's important to know though, is that feminism brought women financial independence that benefited not just them, but has benefited society at large. So we, we know from many different studies that when women work, there are dramatic benefits to them because they have the financial freedom to leave things like abusive marriages. So that's very important for their health. And we also know that the more productive women are in society, whether it's taking care of children, whether it's taking care of elderly parents, whether it's being in the workforce. In fact, in Japan, uh, about 70% of women who are working, when they have their first child, they drop out of the workforce. And that cost the Japanese GDP about $1 trillion. If those women were working at the same rates as men, the Japanese GDP would be raised almost $1 trillion. So whether women are working at home or working in the workforce, we know that this is great for society. More productive women means more productive, more wealth, wealthier, and healthier societies. This is dramatic, very important. And on an individual level, it can be important too, because of course, as I said, women can leave things like abusive marriages, can take care of their families and small children if their partner gets sick or dies. But who is taking care of all of these hard working women? As, women health, as women's health professionals, this job starts with us. So there's a term that's always tossed around the healthcare world and especially the wellness world called self-care. And if we step back for a moment and we analyze what the average, you know, 30-year-old woman, by the way, those studies on nurses and corporate women looked at women in their 20s and 30s. So women are burning out younger than ever. So let's step back and take a look at an average working mom in her 30s or early 40s. What is she doing all day? A patient I talked to yesterday had a three-month-old baby, 
a three-year-old toddler, was starting a business, was taking care of elderly parents, was volunteering at the school. Think of everything that your average 30 to 45 year old woman is doing. And then they do even more at either end of the spectrum of age as well. So this idea of adding to her list self-care, she's got to take care of her children, her patients, her, you know, her neighbors, the volunteer work at school. And then we tell her, now you have to step up and Im improve or focus on your self-care. Of course, I believe that's important, but if you think about it, framing it that way is kind of cruel. We've given her one more job to do. Who's taking care of these women? It's our job to support our clients, our female clients and patients to reach her definition of success. And that is the key. The key is understanding what her definition of success looks like. But how do we do this? Because we know there, there, are, there are studies that show us that the predictor, one of the best predictors of long-term health for men is being married to a woman. One of the best predictors of long-term health for women is being surrounded by female girlfriends, female friends. So what is our role as a woman's healthcare professional knowing that support by a woman for a woman is essential? So I believe that for women to be productive, successful, and healthy, our role as women's health professionals is to step into these five steps for helping her actually taking care of her and helping her to find people in her community and in her life that also takes care of her and not putting this job of self-care on her in the way that it kind of adds to her to-do list. Take care of your children, take care of your family, take care of your work, and take care of yourself. It's all on you. So let's look at how we can support her to find people to take care of her. Step one, be her inspiration. So as a women's healthcare professional, as you allow yourself to be taken care of, by, taken care of accepting help from others, you are inspiring her to do the same. Also, taking care of yourself by setting boundaries as to what you will and won't do is another way that you inspire your patients. When you are, are doing the same thing that she is, taking care of 50 million people you know, in your life and having no one taking care of you, then you are not modeling for her what's possible. Second, so here's where the definition of success comes in. As I said, looking at a Martha Stewart magazine, the definition of success might be throwing a flawless party. Or reading a parenting magazine, that will define for you the definition of success of being a parent. But every woman has deep inside her, her own definition of success. And that is her vision for her healthiest, and most successful life. And it may be much, much simpler than the definition that she's getting from sources outside of herself, from TV, from magazines, from other people's ideas, from the ideas that were given to her in school as she was growing up, from her parents, from her colleagues, from her bosses. So uncovering that vision is our first job in supporting women to reach their definition of success. It's knowing what their definition of success is. And how we do that is by holding space and by mindfully listening to our patients. And we go over this in a lot more detail in our coaching courses, but this is where it begins, creating a safe space in your clinic for your patients to show you her vision of success. And at first, if she comes to you in a lot of pain or very sick, it might be just crawling out of that pain and then finding herself able to functionally move again, finding herself able to take care of and be present with her children without being distracted by pain. Simply cooking a meal might be her vision. So let's get to her vision, not the outside world's vision of success. Step uh, three is the reality check. 
as I said, we start to look at what women are juggling these days, how busy they are, how quickly they want to achieve, how much they want to get done at any given time. There's only so much time in the day. And our job is to narrow that focus so that women are spending time doing things and energy, doing things that will lead them toward their vision. And that's it. You got to clear the decks of everything else. Step four, support her in asking for and receiving help. I can't tell you how many clients of mine have said, oh yes, well, you know, I've had my friends have offered to pick up my daughter, but I really hate to do that because I don't really know what I'm going to do to reciprocate because I'm still at work. We have this very narrow idea of what it means to receive help and to give help. Perhaps you're not reciprocating one-to-one -one when uh, one of her friends and her support network gives her some support. But if it's allowing her to do work in her community that she has a very specialized skill to do, then she's adding to the whole community. And I think women have to start seeing themselves as valuable within their community so that they are seeing the value in allowing others to support them. And when it comes to allowing their spouses to support them, very often, and I learned this from a friend of mine who's a relationship coach, her name is Stacy Martino, look her up, she's full of energy. Um, when I, what I learned is when it comes to supporting our clients in accepting help from their spouses, very often it's simply matters of learning communication skills between men and women, because we talk very differently. And step five, accountability. So our final job is, we have a lot of knowledge as healthcare professionals for helping women to heal from pain, to improve their symptoms, to improve their energy, to sleep better, all of these health giving skills that we have. But they're never going to do any good unless we take a stand for our clients and hold them accountable to going home and doing what it is that they have chosen to do to gain that energy. So let's say they committed to you in your, you know, in your session that they were going to go to sleep by 10 p.m. each night so that the next morning they were going to have the energy to have less pain, to be in, have more focus so that they can actually move towards that vision. If they're not sticking to it and not going to bed by 10 p.m., it's our role to take a stand for them and hold them accountable to those things that, that you and your client agree to do, that they're, that they're going to do. So those are the five steps for supporting women to redefine work and success in a way that is health-giving, not health sucking. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being here for this first video in our series, and I will see you in video number two. Bye.